Hey, Oddings. Before we get into today's episode, I wanted to really quickly tell you about one of our sponsors who, without them, the show would not be possible. If you're looking for a better night's sleep, I recommend that you try a Purple Mattress. They're firm and soft at the same time because they're made from a brand new material developed by an actual rocket scientist. They keep you supported and still very comfortable at the same time. And they're breathable, so you stay cool. So if you want a better night's sleep, try Purple for a 100-night risk-free trial. If you're not fully satisfied, you can return your mattress for a full refund. Every mattress comes backed by a 10-year warranty and is shipped to your home for free. And while they're at it, Purple will set up and remove your old mattress for you as well. You're going to love Purple. And right now, our listeners will get a free Purple pillow with the purchase of a mattress. That's in addition to the great free gifts they're offering site-wide. Just text SS to 84888. Message and data rates may apply. And now, back to the show. Hey, I'm Sapphire. Wanna hear something scary? My family hates me. The following story is based on a submission from Desiree. I used to think my family hated me. Maybe hate is a strong word, but I definitely did not feel particularly well-liked. I was my parents' least favorite compared to my two younger sisters. They just never seemed to want to be around me or talk to me. They wouldn't even let me take care of our hamster, Lulu. I thought I was being paranoid, but my parents' cold demeanor became more apparent when we moved into a new house. They gave me the room at the very end of a hallway, secluded and removed from everything else. They claimed it was so I could have privacy, but I think they just wanted me far away. That room gave me the creeps. I remember the first night there, I woke up and heard hushed voices echoing in the walls of my room. I couldn't make out everything they were saying, except for my name, the many times it came up. The next morning, I told my mom about the voices and that I thought the house might be haunted. Hmm, you must have heard the pipes or something, she said dismissively, but I know what I heard. I also knew arguing with her wasn't going to go anywhere, so I decided to suck it up. I went to bed with such anxiety that night that I had an incredibly lucid and horrifying nightmare. I was strapped down to my bed, surrounded by dark figures who were chanting over and over, and I couldn't move or scream. I just laid there while these figures sprinkled me with unknown substances. The next morning at breakfast, I silently ate while my parents asked my sisters how school was going. Then Jamie, one of my sisters, turned to me. Are you still hearing things at night, sissy? She asked. I was actually a little startled by the sudden attention on me. Um, yeah, and uh, I actually had a pretty bad dream last night. Felt like there were people in my room or something. My sister then turned to look at my parents. I felt like they were telepathically talking about me right in front of me. Then Jamie spoke again. Mom, you should give her that stuff to make her sleep better. My mom nodded. I was still taken aback by this sudden interest in helping me sleep better. So before bed that night, I swallowed the pill that my mom gave me. As an extra precaution, I gathered as many religious items from around the house, crucifixes, paintings, as many as my hands could carry, and put them in my room. I thought they would protect me from whatever was haunting me during my sleep. The following morning, I woke up in a panic. Everything I had put up the night before was now on the ground, shattered in pieces. I knew my parents were not going to be happy, but I also felt like this was proof that there was something in my room. So I ran to tell my parents. There must have been an earthquake during the night, I guess, my mom said, but nothing else in the house was broken. Only the religious items in my room. It didn't add up. I spent that whole day crying in my room. Before bedtime, Jamie came in with her hands cupped in a ball. She hopped on my bed and opened her hands. Here, maybe Lulu will help you sleep tonight, she said. I glanced out the door and back at my sister. Is mom okay with that? She doesn't have to know. I thanked my sister and lay down to bed, snuggling Lulu in my hands. When I woke up the next morning, Lulu had moved. 
I felt around my pillows and blankets, but I couldn't find her. I realized it was an idiotic idea to fall asleep like that with a tiny animal. I figured she must have run out of my room under the door in the middle of the night, so I went looking for her. The rest of my family was already up and in the middle of breakfast. I couldn't let them know I had lost Lulu, so I decided to continue my search after I had a couple bites. But after swallowing one spoonful of cereal, I spit it out onto the table. I suddenly felt incredibly nauseous. I began dry heaving over the table until I coughed up a small clump of brown fur. My family immediately stood up and began praying the Lord's Prayer. I felt dizzy and blacked out. When I came to, I was strapped on my bed with my family standing around me, sprinkling unknown substances all over me. What are you doing? Why do you hate me? I cried, frantically trying to release myself. The expressions of each of my family members turned to sadness. We don't hate you, Desiree, my dad said. We hate who you become at night. I don't understand. You've tried to kill each and every one of us in your sleep, my dad continued, multiple times. We're trying to help you, sissy, Jamie chimed in, but nothing seems to be working. I didn't know what to think. This whole time, I thought that I was being traumatized by a demon in my room, and I was the demon. My family didn't hate me. They're just afraid of me. And I think I am too. I get a lot of questions about what I wear and what equipment I use, so we've added helpful links for you to find those items and more in the description below. Thank you to all of our patrons, especially Lulu, who had a character named after her in this episode. If you'd like to join our VIP program, visit patreon.com snarled. Want more Something Scary? You can hear more stories over on the Something Scary podcast, available for free on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. The links are in the description below. If you'd like to submit a story, send me an email at somethingscary at snarled.com. Like and share this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and turn on the bell for notifications. And if you dare, follow me on social media. Until next time, sweet dreams.